here with the Fab Lab. We have got another video instructional for you. Um, part of a series we have been doing is making kits and videos. Uh, the kits were being sent out to different schools and it is in lieu of us not being able to actually go to the schools due to COVID. So this lesson is going to involve one of my favorite tools, which is the pump drill. Pump drill is a traditional uh, technology that is super fun, super useful, has a lot of little interesting science lessons to it when you start to look at how it works. The end result of this piece of technology is you can have something that drills into things with just a little bit of weight, some string, and some sticks. The cool thing about it is the weight of the flywheel is what keeps the drill moving when you push down with your bow here and your string. So say I need to drill through this little piece of wood, I set my drill bit down on it, I make sure my cord is nice and wrapped up the spindle, and I push down, and then I let go, and it'll wrap itself back up from the force of the wheel spinning. Each time I do that, it'll go backwards and forwards, and backwards and forwards, and backwards and forwards. Around the world, these little tiny bits were used for very fine crafts, like drilling holes through harpoon tips, um, drilling holes through needles. We actually had a video of making bone needles and we used the pump drill bit to start the holes on the needles through kayaks to lash them together. We can just keep listing things off. It's a really fun tool. So, we will go over what comes in our kit and how to put them together. Our kit is going to contain a few things. What we have here is we have some washers for the weights, some rings to cover the washers, some inner rings to help fit the washers, and then we have two little cover plates too. These will be the pieces for our bow. We'll have our spindle here, our socket, and one drill bit, and a little connector tube, some PEX tubing that we can form a little bit with heat so that it will seal nicely and connect our hex bit holder to our dowel. We've got all our pieces together. We're gonna get this started. Uh, first thing that I think we should probably do is glue our two little pieces together for our bow, since that's gonna take the longest to set. If you want it to look nice, if you have a rough side, put the two rough sides together so you get the nice outsides, and the glue will help fill those spaces, make it a little stronger. Got our two pieces, get a nice little glue line, right like that, maybe a little there, a little there, and a little there. Yeah, right like that. So we got this, line it up real nice, and I mean, you can wear gloves, can wipe it down, you know. Um, I'll just wash my hands afterwards, it's pretty straightforward. So we got that, we got it nice and lined up. Make sure it's really lined up, because you want your holes to be able to fit the string that we put through and to slide really smooth on the dowel. So you can clamp these. Only needs to be for about 35 minutes for it to set well enough. Uh, 24 hours for a super solid cure. Take that, and we get on to our next step. Our next step. We are going to want to attach this dowel to this hex bit holder. It doesn't readily attach, but we have a nice little handy piece of hex piping. This stuff's cool. As you heat it up, you can move it around, it'll stretch out, it'll seat onto things, and then as it cools down, it hardens that way. To heat up our PEX pipe, we can use multiple options. One is a heat gun, holding it over a little burner, even just some flame, even a candle, as long as you keep it at the right heat, don't get it too close. Ah, my hand, that's hot! You just need a nice, even heat all the way around it. You're gonna just slowly heat this thing up, You can just kind of touch it a little bit here and there and just test it out. If it feels like you can start to get that hex bit in there, the hex bit holder, then that's a good sign. If it's really hard to get it in there, just heat it up a little bit more until you can just barely get it all the way down. Oh, here we go, starting to move real easy. So you want to be careful not to burn yourself a little bit. Ah, oh, my hand, that's hot! The plastic is hot. 
And that's about as far as we're gonna get that one to go down, which is more than enough. We'll be able to push it down a little bit more once we heat up the other side and get the dowel in. You have plenty of room on this. You can trim a little bit of that pex off. And sometimes it can be a little harder to get it all the way down through there, but we'll try it out. So we just wanna make sure we heat this pipe up really well. Now one thing we're gonna do as we put this dowel in, the pipe is gonna be a little bit soft and malleable still. So we wanna make sure that as it cures and cools off, that it's exactly straight. Because if it's not straight, your drill is gonna be really wobbly. So I'll, put, I'll push it down just like this. And it's going, it's going. I'm gonna heat it up just a little bit more. I only have about a quarter of an inch left. All right. Now, since I felt this solidly connect, what I'm gonna do is sit here and just roll this as it cools down. This is a cool technique for uh, straightening arrows. You get the wood really hot. As you straighten it and it gets straight, you put it down on the table and just keep rolling it so that when we get it, we got a nice straight connection point. So this next part is we need to get this flywheel together. Now there's a lot of ways to do flywheels. Flywheels are pretty straightforward. All it is is a piece of weight that can be attached to this that has a nice even amount of weight around all sides. It doesn't even have to be like super circular. Uh, one traditional style of a pump drill is even having a couple rocks made in a little rectangle basket of sticks that's lashed to it and it totally works also. We just need some kind of even amount of weight on opposing sides. If it's, if it's not an even amount of weight, it'll want to throw it. This little setup that we have here, we basically are making a little basket out of wood for our washers. So we have a basket here. Oh look, there's some glue right there. Put this one on. Now, got a little piece of wood that goes inside my washer. And that can just hang out right there. We've got a little piece of wood that goes outside my washer. Now I'm using generously quite a bit of glue because it is gonna fill up some gaps that we need to build up. So I'll just put another layer of glue and this stuff washes off real easy so don't worry about getting messy. Put another washer down, another inside ring, another outside ring and I'll even put more down, help fill up these little gaps between it and then I'll put my little top cage on, square everything up. A nice little deck of cards. Well we got a nice little circle through there and while this is all still nice and wet, Put this right on my deal here, just to where it gets snug. We don't need it to be super tight, we just need it to be snug. And now, if you wanted to, you could clamp it, nice little clamps. That also works real well. Let's get that on both sides. And then we can wipe off any excess. So, we made sure our flywheel is nice and straight, but our piece of wood right now, it's not, you know, the PEX fits a little bit differently each time. Sometimes it's really snug, sometimes it's not snug enough. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wipe some of this glue off of here. Make sure that's still straight. You can even bend it a little bit, then sight down it, bend it a little bit. And once we glue down this uh, flywheel, it'll help keep it that way also. So since our flywheel is a little wiggly, what I'm gonna do is put just a tiny little bit of tape right here. Just like one or two passes rips them off so that we can try to get that to fit just a little bit more snug and then put some glue in there because you just want to make sure your flywheel is really well attached. So let's try it again. Okay, looks good. Yep, it's really snug now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull these off again real quick. And if you find that it's too snug, you can always 
take off some of that tape. But now we made sure that's really good. I'm gonna put my little clamp back. Drop a tiny little bit of glue down in there. And then let it sit and chill. So, we got our pieces all glued up. We got our nice flywheel. We got our nice bow. We just need the string to attach the two. So you can use pretty much any kind of string that has any kind of strength to it. Uh, this stuff is pretty thin, wax nylon, basically some thick dental floss. You know, you just wanna make sure you've got enough room to tie extra knots and uh, looks like plenty. Only thing we need is a little hole in the top here. Luckily, we have the tools to do it. So we have our second pump drill here. You could do just a notch. You could pre-drill a tiny little hole if you wanted, but what works well with this is just to get it a little bit going and then nice and light, super soft. And we've got a nice clean hole. What we can then do with that, we'll put our thread through and get it nice, even distance. And I'm gonna throw in just a couple of clove hitches right at the top, or half hitches. Two half hitches make a clove hitch, which is nice. So, we've got that. Now that's not gonna slide through back and forth. It's gonna stay in place. And then we've got extra length here. Don't forget, put this on first, and then tie it on. It's gonna be helpful. You can have it so that it can go close to the bottom of the flywheel, or you could have it go close to the bottom of the pecs. Because it might get stuck on the pecs here and there, trying to go down further than it, we'll just set ours to go right here. Um, your string angle, and the angle that it comes out from the spindle, will affect it a little bit. So if you make it really low anyways, it's really not gonna help with the torque. The more extreme of an angle you have, it actually helps spin the thing. So luckily we have plenty of extra length in our dowel so we can have this sitting up higher and we have nice fine bits that don't add too much friction so we don't need as much crazy torque. So I'm just gonna set it to stop right there at the pecs. So that is how I'll judge my length. And then you can tie it however you want. I am going to Bring it around so it has some friction, so it stays right there. I'm gonna wrap it around one more time, and then I'm gonna tie it to itself. I'm just gonna do a couple simple hitches, and that's basically just putting your string around it, tightening it up. Trim that off. Well, what do we got? Our other side to do. that there, go around, go around, and then tie it off. Now we have our pump drill, and we just need a bit attached to it. 